all right welcome back on this uh, second clip yeah uh, in chapter 13 sorry chapter 18 yeah we'll be looking at the application yeah, of what we have learned in clip one that is the cash cycle as well as the operating cycle yeah now assume that you are given this information here okay uh, you're given this information here now you want to use this information to compute yeah the various cash cycle as well as the operating cycle yeah? you're given this information yeah? All right let's uh, look at this yeah? first we want to compute the inventory period how do you compute the inventory inventory period we take the average inventory yeah this is the beginning inventory this is the ending inventory yeah so we add these two and then we divide this by two that will give you the average inventory then you divide this by the cost of goods sold, yeah, which is eight hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Then you multiply with three hundred and sixty-five days a year, so you get this. Yeah, this is how you measure the inventory period. So this inventory period tells you roughly how long yeah, uh, a company takes to sell uh, its bought inventory. Okay, so longer uh, this inventory period the longer it takes to sell the inventory that it has bought. Yeah? Uh, sometimes the length of the invent, uh, inventory period is due to the processing yeah, of the inventory to finish goods. But sometimes it's also a mark of uh, or it also reflects the failure or the delay yeah, in, in the firm selling its inventory. Therefore, this is a very useful measure. Yeah? The longer it takes, then the greater would be your financing needs, yeah? because your cash is tied up as inventory. Therefore, uh, you need uh, cash yeah, to support this longer inventory days. Yeah? So it is also a reflection, uh, reflection on the financing need for the firm. All right, then we come to the receivable period. Yeah, receivable period, again, the same manner. We take the average receivables. This is the beginning receivables. This is the ending receivables. You add the two, then you divide this by two to get the average receivables for the period or for the year. Then we divide this by the sales yeah, or credit sales. Okay, so <coughs> this, and then you multiply this by, by 365, you get the receivable period. So this is 57.13 days. Now what does this tell you? It tells you that on average, yeah, the company takes about 57 days to collect from its customers after selling yeah, to the customers. It takes about 57 days. Yeah. Alright, so the operating cycle is the time when you purchase the inventory until you collect from your customer. Yeah? Therefore, it is the sum of these two periods, yeah? 111, if you round this to the nearest days, and these two, you round to the nearest days, you get 111 plus 57, you get 168 days. Yeah? Okay, so this operating cycle tells you that you take, yeah, the firm is taking 168 days from the time it purchases the inventory to the time when it collects the payment from the customer. Yeah? So that is the length of the period, yeah, the operating cycle of the firm. Yeah? Longer the operating cycle, greater the financing need of the firm. Other things being equal. Yeah? All right, so that is why we, we compute the operating cycle. Now we move on. Yeah? Then we also uh, compute the payable period or payables period. Yeah? Now this is the average payables. 75 is the beginning payable plus 100 the ending payable you divide this by 2 then you divide all this by the cost of the sold yeah 820,000 multiply this with 365 so it gives you about 39 days yeah? 38.95 days now what is the implication of this yeah? the implication is that the company takes about 39 days yeah to pay its suppliers it purchases on credit from the supplier okay and then it pays after 39 days yeah so that's the meaning of uh, this measure yeah? payable period now having got the payable period you can compute the cash cycle cash cycle is actually the operating cycle minus the payable period yeah? minus yeah? not add yeah? minus therefore it's 129 days yeah so it means that um, 
the cash cycle yeah, is actually the difference in time between paying uh, cash for purchases and receiving cash for sales and yeah, that is called cash cycle yeah so it is 129 days yeah? it means that you pay 129 days earlier for your purchases then the uh, then you collect from your customers for the sales that you have made to your customers yeah so the longer yeah, this cash cycle okay this is a very precise measure yeah? and this measure is very useful for uh, working capital financing yeah the longer the cash cycle greater the short-term financing need of the firm Okay, the others are only indirect measures, yeah? but this one is a very direct measure of financing. Yeah? The longer the number of days, the longer you need the financing for. Yeah? So we have to finance our inventory. It says inventory, but I think inventory is too restrictive. I think it's better to st uh, state that it is working capital. Yeah? So to finance the working capital uh, for 129 days. Yeah? The longer the cash cycle, greater the financing need of the firm. Okay, so if we want to reduce our financing needs, then we need to uh, try and reduce the receivable period and the inventory period. Okay, we can extend the payable period because the payable period will reduce your cash cycle, reduce your financing need. Yeah? But uh, these two components, receivable period and inventory period, can uh, lengthen yeah, your cash cycle and also your operating cycle. Is that okay? So here we need to also look at the industry average. Yeah? The idea is not only to reduce this uh, cash cycle. Yeah? You need a cash cycle which is sustainable yeah? and must be tenable, meaning can be maintained. Yeah? Remember the goal of financial management is not to ma minimize all this. Yeah? It's actually to maximize the shareholders wealth. Okay, So as long as this is reasonable and this maximizes the shareholder wealth, then that is a good goal, yeah? That is a good uh, management, short-term financial management, yeah? All right. Now, with that, we finish the first part of the chapter. Now, we move on to the second topic, yeah, in this chapter, which is short-term financial policy, yeah? Here, note that the key word here is financial, yeah? Not financing, yeah? Short-term financial policy. So, when you say financial, it involves two uh, two aspects. Yeah? One is investment and then the other is financing. Yeah? If, we, if we say short-term financing policy, then we are only talking about financing, yeah? borrowing money or obtaining funds yeah? to support the operations. Okay, So here it's financial means it includes investment as well as financing. Yeah? Right, short-term financial policy has two aspects here. One is the size of investment in current assets. Yeah? This is called working capital investment policy. Okay, and here we have two uh, categories of policy. We can divide the policy into two. Yeah? One is flexible or conservative. They mean the same thing. Flexible means conservative and conservative means flexible. Yeah? So here it means that you maintain a high ratio of current assets to sales. Yeah? The proportion of current assets to sales. Yeah? That means you, you use a lot of current assets yeah, to support your law of sales. Then the company has flexible or conservative uh, working capital investment policy. Okay, but if you maintain a low ratio of current assets to sales, then we are using a restrictive or aggressive. Yeah? Aggressive and restrictive are the same thing. Yeah? Aggressive or res restrictive policy. Uh, to manage yeah, your current assets okay if you maintain low ratio of current assets to sales then you are having a restrictive or aggressive policy now when we come to working capital financing policy yeah, this is the financing of current assets okay here also we have flexible the same terms are used here flexible or conservative policy uh, here you use less short-term debt more long-term debt then it's called flexible yeah? if you use more long-term debt then it's become flexible uh, or conservative if it is restrictive or aggressive then you're using more short-term debt and then less long-term debt yeah? so it becomes restrictive or aggressive yeah? you can see why this is the case yeah? uh, in greater detail uh, in the later slides 
All right. So basically, why uh, we, we call this uh, restrictive yeah, or conservative? Yeah, restrictive or aggressive? Yeah, or conservative and flexible? Yeah. So this is a summary of what we have seen in the previous slide. Yeah, working capital investment policy. This is measured by the proportion of current assets to sales yeah, per dollar sales or per sales. Working capital financing policy looks at the proportion of long-term funds yeah, compared to short-term funds. Yeah. So, uh, if it's conservative or flexible policy, then working capital investment policy will have high proportion of current assets per dollar of sales. Yeah. Why we? Uh, why is it called conservative? Yeah, because it has low risk and low yield. Yeah, because you have a high proportion of current assets. Okay. When there is risk here, uh, financial distress risk here, uh, meaning there is a need to pay, okay, you can sell off your current assets because current assets are quite liquid. Yeah? So you can quickly sell off your current assets to make the payment yeah, that is required. So there's low risk of financial default. But there's also low yield. Yeah? So there's a trade off. Low risk is good, but low yield is not so good. Yeah? Yield here means low return. Yeah? Because you have a lot of your cash tied up as current assets, they don't earn you a lot of return. Yeah? Return, so that's low return. So no doubt you have low risk, but it also has low yield. Yeah? So there is a trade-off. Okay, so uh, this is when you have conservative yeah? uh, or flexible policy with regards to working capital investment policy. Yeah? Now the opposite is true if you are you are taking aggressive or restrictive yeah uh, position yeah here you would have low proportion of current assets per dollar of sales yeah that means you use very little current assets in that case you will have high yeah high here it's low it's high this is low here and this is high yield yeah low uh, high risk and high yield so there is a trade off yeah you have high risk because you have very little uh, current assets when there is a need to make payment yeah? let's say there is a financial distress okay you cannot sell off your current assets because you have low proportion of current assets okay the, the liquidity is low therefore your uh, financial distress risk is high and uh, but the opposite yeah? the trade off is that you have high yield yeah? because you invest or you tie up uh, less assets as your current I mean less cash yeah as your current assets you have more uh, uh, cash yeah, or funds tied up as uh, fixed assets which earn you higher return higher yield yeah so there is a trade-off here yeah so there is trade-off means there is benefit as well as costs yeah this is the benefit this is the cost this is the cost because high risk but this is the benefit yeah so either policy will have both benefit and also cost. There will be a trade-off. Yeah? Now with uh, working capital financing policy, with conservative or flexible, yeah, you would use high proportion of long-term funds. Why long-term funds is low risk? Yeah, it is low risk because long-term funds need not be repaid. Yeah? If you borrow for long term, uh, the repayment, yeah is not a problem yeah, because you don't have to immediately repay the loan yeah uh, so that is a good thing yeah? that is a positive thing that's a benefit low risk because the uh, financing will not be repaid immediately yeah but it also has it, uh, the a disadvantage is that it has high cost because long-term funds the cost is usually higher than short-term debt yeah so it has high cost so there is a trade-off here as well yeah? so you use high proportion of long-term funds there is some benefit low risk of repayment you don't have to repay immediately okay but if you take short-term debt you have to pay yeah high risk okay here yeah? but it has high cost yeah? because the long-term funds are costlier than short-term funds if you borrow for a short uh, short run or short term the interest rate is usually lower. Yeah? If you borrow for long term, the interest rate is usually higher. Now that's the opposite for aggressive policy. Yeah? Where you use low 